I'm Lauren and I am a Harry Potter fan. And I have had the absolute pleasure of being able to travel around the world going to different events and locations that are really great for Harry Potter fans. Also recently, one of you asked me to compare the different Harry Potter travel destinations that I've visited. Because it can definitely be overwhelming to narrow down all of the options and choose a place that will be worth the trip. So this is just a list of some of my favorites out of all the places that I've been to. I'm going to put information for all of these locations in the video description below if you're curious and you want to check any of them out. If you're a Harry Potter fan too, give this video a thumbs up. And here's a list of my top seven Harry Potter travel destinations. Number seven is Platform 9 and 3 quarters at King's Cross Station in London. If you've read the Harry Potter books or seen the Harry Potter movies, you know how important this location is for the books. And even though it isn't actually between platforms 9 and 10 like it is in the books, they've put it in an easily accessible location that anybody can get to even if you don't have a train ticket. It's also right next to a bookstore and a huge Harry Potter gift shop which is full of things that you can't get anywhere else. When I was there in the summer of 2013, I got a platform 9 and 3 quarters keychain and I also got a hoodie with the same design on it. And we picked up a couple of Harry Potter books that had some new covers that we really, really liked because, you know, can't have enough of those. So basically, platform 9 and 3 quarters is a brick wall that they put half a trolley cart up to. So when you hold onto the cart, you can take a picture and it looks like you're running right into the wall. They have professional photographers there and when I was there, they also let you take photos with your phone or your own cameras. I personally thought that it was worth the wait even though there isn't that much to do there just because of how much the location means to me as a Harry Potter fan. This is a place that I've dreamed about going since I was a kid and it was really fun to go. I don't know if I would go back and wait in the line again, but I would definitely visit that gift shop again. It was very cool. Number six is a kind of general answer rather than a specific travel destination and what's good about that is that it takes place all over the world so it's very likely that depending on where you are in the world you can probably get to one someday. And that is Wizard Rock Concerts. If you are not familiar with Wizard Rock, it is music that spans all genres that is inspired by the Harry Potter books. Back in 2005 I started a Wizard Rock band with my best friend Nina called The Moaning Myrtles and that was my gateway into the real life iteration of the Harry Potter fandom. I had been a very active fan online before that but I didn't realize that I could actually go to events in person and meet other fans and make friends with them in real life and it was absolutely life-changing for me. Wizard Rock concerts are some of the most fun, weird, accepting environments that you'll ever be in and I absolutely love them. For the past eight or nine years I've been performing Wizard Rock music under my own name Lauren Fairweather from a bunch of characters perspectives and it is so much fun. At its peak there were something like 700 Wizard Rock bands in the world but some that you might have heard of are Harry and the Potters, Draco and the Malfoys, the Parcel Mouths, the Whomping Willows, Tonks and the Aurors, and while a lot of people seem to have gotten the idea that Wizard Rock doesn't exist anymore, there are a lot of bands that are still regularly playing shows, and I am one of them. Tonks and the Aurors especially has been touring every year for a really long time, and her shows are amazing. You should absolutely try to go see her the next time she's near you. These concerts typically feature more than one Wizard Rock band because we like getting together and playing shows together, so going to a show is definitely the best introduction that you can get to the scene and what it's all about. If you are interested in going to a Wizard Rock concert, I would recommend following all of the bands that you're interested in seeing on social media and subscribing to them on YouTube. That way you can hear when they have announcements about future tours. I'm going to list a few recommendations in the video description below. And on a similar note, another kind of event that you can go to that will occasionally feature Wizard Rock bands, number five is the Yule Ball. This is an event that took place in Harry's fourth year at Hogwarts and a lot of event planners around the world have been throwing Yule Ball themed events around Christmas time. My favorite Yule Ball takes place every year in Boston, Massachusetts at the Middle East downstairs. It's hosted by Harry and the Potters and it's basically a big holiday themed concert and it's really fun. The success of this event has led Harry and the Potters to expand their Yule Ball event and it usually also takes place in New York City. But there's also one in Scotland every year. I've played it a few Yule Balls in Oklahoma City. This one was hosted by a Harry Potter Alliance chapter and it was hosted in Edmonton, Alberta. And this one was by far the most beautiful Yule Ball I've attended. It was up in Toronto a few years back. So if you're looking to dress up and dance and possibly go to a concert, the Yule Ball is a really fun event that you should definitely check out. 
So I'm counting this next destination as two, and you'll see why in a second. And that is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando. I'm putting Hogsmeade at number four and Diagon Alley at number three. The Hogsmeade side of the park is the first Wizarding World of Harry Potter park to open. And it's cute and winter themed. There's snow on top of all of the buildings and Hogwarts is the big main attraction there. There are little shops that you can go in with tons of exclusive Harry Potter merchandise to buy. There's the Ollivander's Wand experience where one lucky person gets to try out a wand and do some magic. There's the Dragon Challenge roller coaster which used to be dueling dragons at Universal. There's a much smaller roller coaster called Flight of the Hippogriff that's intended more for younger kids. And then there is Forbidden Journey which is the ride inside Hogwarts Castle. My favorite part of that ride is getting to walk in the line which goes through Hogwarts. There's a classroom, there are hallways with moving paintings, you get to walk through Dumbledore's office, and all of these different locations are amazingly detailed and beautiful and I highly recommend taking your time and looking at everything. The Hogsmeade side is in Universal's Islands of Adventure Park and more recently they've added the Diagon Alley side which is in Universal Studios. They connected the two sections using a Hogwarts Express train ride which is adorable. Unfortunately you have to have a park hopper ticket to be able to go on that ride because it takes you into the other park essentially. But it is so cute and heartwarming and it's different depending on the direction you're going. I loved it. <laughs> now the Diagon Alley side I thought was very different. It feels more like a city instead of a small town. The buildings are much, much taller. Every direction you look, there's something to see. There are little alleyways everywhere. It's really, really beautiful. They even have a nocturne alley section, which is always dark and pretty well air conditioned, which I enjoyed. <laughs> the shows and performances on the Diagon Alley side I thought were really cool. When I was there, they had a beautiful show that integrated these amazing puppets and told the tale of the three brothers from Beetle the Bard. The only ride on the Diagon Alley side besides the Hogwarts Express that I mentioned earlier is Escape from Gringotts and I unfortunately have not been on that ride yet because I was pregnant the last time I was in that park. But I did walk through the line and they have some terrifying goblin electronics that look you directly in the eye. So, you know, if that's something that won't give you a horrible nightmares, go for it. Otherwise, I recommend like staring down at your feet while you walk through that part. I thought that the Diagon Alley side of the park really fixed a lot of the issues with the Hogsmeade side. There is one whole section that has a big ceiling on top of it so you can get some shade, whereas I feel like they didn't think about that a whole lot on the Hogsmeade side, so you have the Florida sun beating down on you and it's a little difficult. And then since these aren't their own theme parks, you get to go to the rest of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure while you're there. So I highly recommend that if you're ever able to visit Orlando that you check out both of these. I have not been able to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter parks in Japan and Hollywood yet, but I definitely would like to. I'm not really sure what the differences are, but I'm pretty sure that the one in Orlando is the biggest just because it takes up these two sections of the parks. So this next one is another category of Harry Potter themed events that you should definitely try to make it to at some point in your life if you're a big Harry Potter fan. So number two on the list is Harry Potter fan conventions. I cannot speak highly enough of these conventions. They are some of the most enthusiastic enthusiastic, warm, accepting environments that I've ever been in, and I absolutely love them. My favorite is LeakyCon, and I've been to every one so far. The next one they're hosting is in Dublin, Ireland, and I am going to be performing there, so I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see what Dublin is like. But really, it doesn't usually matter to me that much where the conference takes place, because honestly, I don't leave it very often. The thing for me at these conventions that I look forward to the most is that they are a place where you can be who you are and you can celebrate the things you love and be surrounded by other people who get it, who understand what it's like to be such a big Harry Potter fan. I know that when I talk about Harry Potter in most social circles, people roll their eyes at me, they don't quite get it, and I've had to kind of suppress that side of my personality, which is unfortunate because it makes me very happy. On top of getting to make friends who love Harry Potter just as much as you do, there are also all kinds of things that you can do there. There's a marketplace where you can buy all sorts of merchandise that is related to Harry Potter in some way. There are panels dissecting everything you could ever want to talk about with the series. There are workshops and round tables that you can participate in. There are wizard rock concerts. And while these don't take place as often as the wizard rock concerts and the Yule Balls because they are much larger events, I highly recommend traveling to get to them if you're far away. But they also do take place in lots of different locations. This May I will be performing at MistyCon which is a Harry Potter convention in New Hampshire. MistyCon is very immersive and cosplay focused and it's very fun to be there. And if you keep an ear out over the next couple months you'll be able to hear where I'm performing
performing this fall. So yeah, definitely go to a Harry Potter convention. We've reached the end of the countdown. There's only one left. Now obviously I love all of these places. I hope that I make it back to all of them eventually. But I felt like this one was really something special and I was actually not expecting to love it as much as I did. My number one Harry Potter travel destination is the WB Studio Tour in London. Now this is basically a giant warehouse where they have kept sets and costumes and props that they used in the filming of the Harry Potter movies. And they have set them up like a museum and you can walk through them. Some of them you can interact with and it is amazing. I've never really been that excited about pop culture museums or places like Planet Hollywood where you can see costumes from movies up close. It's obviously pretty cool, but I never had the emotional reaction until I went to the WB Studio Tour. There is so much detail that you don't see in the films, that the artists that were working on these set pieces and these costumes, you can tell that they put so much work and thought into every little detail, even though they knew you probably would never even see it on screen. There were big things that I never even noticed, like giant statues of each of the Hogwarts house mascots in the Great Hall. You get to see how much smaller some things were in person. You get to see some of the film tricks that they used to make them look a certain way. And what I think is most effective about the way that they've arranged this whole thing that you walk through is that they have the lighting and the music and it's not just a warehouse with a bunch of stuff in it. They've arranged it in ways that really make you feel like you're there <laughs> and it is absolutely wonderful. I, I want to go back because the, the other thing that's really interesting about this is that they change it and add to it constantly. They recently opened up a giant forbidden forest section that I haven't seen yet. They have the Hogwarts Express there now. They even have hundreds of pieces of graphic design that Mina Lima designed. The newspapers, the candy packaging. You can look into the mirror of Erised. One of the coolest parts is the outdoor section where they have the entire Privet Drive house. They have the night bus. They have Godric's Hollow in the state that Voldemort left it. They have moving life-size wizard chess pieces. They have the bridge that Neville blew up in Deathly Hallows, and you can walk on it. I want to go back so badly. I want to stay there for hours. I just loved it so, so much. I just hope that someday I get the opportunity to go back because I loved it so much. So that's it. That is my top seven Harry Potter travel destinations. So obviously there are a lot more than that that I would definitely love to visit someday. I'd love to go see Harry Potter in the Cursed Child because I've heard that the play is much better than reading the script. I have not been to any of the traveling Harry Potter exhibitions, so I'm not sure how similar they are to the WB Studio Tour in London. I'd love to go to the Elephant House and sit at J.K. Rowling's table. Like I said earlier, I'd love to go to other Wizarding World of Harry Potter parks around the world. And I've heard that the Lockhart, which is a Harry Potter themed bar up in Canada, is really great and I would love to go there someday. If you're new here, subscribe to keep up with my future nerdy travel adventures. I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to go to places like this pretty often and I'd love to take you along on the ride. In the comments below, tell me about your favorite Harry Potter themed travel destinations. Have you ever been to any of these and would you recommend any that I didn't mention? I'd love to hear about them. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.